welcome to wireless communication lecture series in this video we are going to discuss about ground reflection model or two ray reflection model so in previous lecture we have discussed about the free space propagation model that was only considering the direct line of sight between the transmitter and the receiver but in practical scenario this is not the situation we have a lots of other propagation mechanisms like reflection diffraction and scattering so here we will consider such a ground reflection model effect and we will calculate the path loss based on it let us assume that this is a ground plane and here we have one base station st is a height of transmitter and here let's say we have one receiver and it has a height of hr the distance between this transmitter and receiver is let's say d let's assume that this transmitter send a signal to this receiver by direct line of sight signal and we call that energy as a elos and let's also assume that this particular signal from the transmitter will incident on this ground plane with some angle theta i which we call as the angle of incident and then it will reflect it back to this particular receiver and that angle is theta 0 and the energy will be electric field will be er equal to eg so we can say it is a reflected e field or a ground reflected field so this is overall the scenario for a uh, ground reflection as you can understand the signal is reflected from the ground or we are seeing a two ray reflection because we have a two ray over here one is a direct signal another one is a reflected signal so in this model what we will calculate is what is the total energy or e field we are receiving over here the e field will be a vector sum of line of sight signal and this ground reflected signal so overall in your book you will see this kind of diagram and if we summarize our discussion so it will be like the two ray ground reflection model consider both direct path as well as the ground reflected path between the transmitter and the receiver and it is mostly applied to the large scale signal strength over a large distance. Now let's see that what is the purpose of this particular theory. So here basically we are interested in calculating the path difference between these two signal, the direct signal as well as the reflected signal. So you can see that both have a different travel path and we need to find out what is the difference between this path. Similarly, we can find out the phase difference also because the signal which is traveling directly will obviously have a different phase compared to the reflected signal and there will be of course a time delay because the direct signal will reach earlier and reflected signal will take some much more time and in the end based on the electric field and the received power we will calculate the path loss. So path loss is basically a transmitted power minus received power. So the free space propagating E field is given by this particular equation. So it is E0 D0 by D. So E0 is a free space E field at a reference distance D0 and D is the distance between this transmitter and the receiver and cos of omega c t minus d by c so basically uh, this is calculated based on the electric field and now let's first find out what will be the e line of sight and then eg and what will be our e total so based on this equation if we consider the two signals the first one is a direct wave signal having a distance as d prime right so e line of sight with distance of d prime at particular time t it will be e0 d0 by d prime cos omega c t minus d prime by c and similarly if we consider the reflected wave which will have a distance of d double prime so it will be given by 
this reflection coefficient e0 d0 by d double prime cos omega c t minus d double prime by c now as we know that for a ground reflection the ground reflection coefficient will be minus 1 and if it is a minus 1 then our e total total electric field at receiver will be the sum of electric field due to the line of sight the direct signal as well as the plus the ground reflected signal and for ground reflected signal if we have a reflection coefficient as a minus 1 then this equation will become minus 1 e0 d0 d double prime cos omega c t minus d double prime by c so this is basically a uh, overall our e total the electric field that we are receiving at distance d because of both the d prime distance as well as d double prime distance and this is the basically a scenario here we will have a total energy and this is our d prime the line of sight is a d prime distance and this whole distance we will consider as a d double prime okay so let's move ahead and first we will calculate the path difference then phase difference and then time difference so here you can see that uh, we need to find out this d prime distance right and we are also interested into find out the d double prime distance and whatever will be the difference between this d prime and d double prime that we will call as a path difference and we can also see that d double prime is greater than d prime therefore the path difference will be d double prime minus d prime now how can we find this d prime so if you observe this figure carefully so this is a one particular triangle right and we know that if you want to find out the other side of the triangle we can use a pythagoras law so this side is a d prime this we know that it is a distance d and this height is a ht minus hr based on that equation if you want to find out the d prime then it will be the square root of ht minus hr whole square plus d square if you want to find out the d double prime then it it's look like it will be difficult to find out with this particular geometry so what we will do we will take a mirror image of this image and then if you will take a mirror image so this d prime distance will be extended up to this and here we can see that for this whole triangle every side will be the same and that's why this distance is also same as this one and now we can easily calculate the d prime distance so here we have another triangle so this is our d prime and this is again a distance d and here we will have the distance of up to hr right so this will become ht plus hr so d double prime will be ht plus hr whole square plus d square so as for our discussion the part difference will be d double prime minus d prime and the d double prime will be ht plus hr whole square plus d square because this is the height minus d prime will be ht minus hr whole square plus d square now if you will simplify this equation with the help of taylor series expression then this overall equation become 2 sthr divided by d and this is our path difference now if you want to find out the phase difference then the phase difference is given by this equation the theta del equal to 2 pi del divided by lambda so we know that lambda is equal to c by f and if you will rewrite this equation then this will become 2 pi f del divided by c and 2 pi f is omega c and therefore it will become del omega c divided by c so this is the phase difference between the direct line of sight signal and the reflected signal now let's find out the time delay so time delay is 
we can calculate based on this equation so time is nothing but uh, this is our difference the part difference which is in let's say meter divided by speed which is meter per second so overall you, you will get the second that is the delay so it is a del divided by c if you want to rewrite this equation in terms of a phase difference then we can replace this del with the help of this theta del equation so here you can see that the theta del which will be equal to 2 pi f del by c and if you will write this equation del will be equal to theta del into c so we have a c into theta del divided by 2 pi f so it is a 2 pi f c over here this c and c will get cancelled and overall equation will become theta del divided by 2 pi f c so this is a time delay our next aim is to find out the path loss if we consider that previous equation number 3 for a very large distance of d then e0 d0 by d e0 d0 by d prime and e0 d0 by d double prime everything will be approximately same and if you will resolve this equation then the received electric field will be given by e total at particular distance d will be 2 e0 d0 by d 2 pi sthr divided by lambda d which will be approximately equal to k divided by t square here k is a constant so this is the overall electric field that we have if we consider the received power at the receiver which will be given by pr equal to pt gtgr st square hr square divided by d raised to 4 so this will be the received power for ground reflection to ray model now we are interested in find out the path loss and we know that path loss is a difference between the transmitted power and the received power so we need to rewrite this equation in terms of a pt by pr so if we write a pt divided by pr then it will be equal to d raised to 4 divided by gtgr st square hr square now we can easily write a equation for path loss for two ray model so it will be given by path loss equal to 40 log d if you will take a log of this so it will become 40 log d and here we have a division so minus 10 log gt plus 10 log gr plus 20 log ht plus 20 log hr so this is the equation which indicate the path loss due to the ground reflection model and you can see that it will consider the height of transmitter height of receiver as well as the gain of transmitter gain of receiver and the distance between the transmitter and the receiver thank you so much for watching this video